welcome motoristas to London's Waterloo Station. This is a station I think I've only ever used a couple of times before in my lifetime. Not particularly useful if you're coming from Manchester. However, with the way the railways are at the moment, the fares are cheaper to come this way and it's faster for me to get to Southampton to bring you today's match day vlog of Manchester City away to Southampton in the Carabao Cup. It took me about an hour and ten minutes to get from London to Southampton and tonight it's going to be a quick in and out of the stadium but I'll do a little food segment first. I have meetings tomorrow so for once I'm going to be alcohol free tonight. I know it's a shock for your Matanistas. I might try a non-alcoholic lager to see how they taste but I'm not sure what the point of having non-alcoholic beers is when you can just have water or a soft drink instead. Anyway, let's get on with it and find something to eat. Okay folks, so something that caught my eye when I was doing my research was the Mango Thai Tapas Bar. Eating out is often a disappointment in provincial British cities, but we'll give this a go. The concept looks interesting. Whether they make it authentic enough or bend the food to British taste, well, we'll have to give it a try and see. Okay, I've gone for a soup and some noodles, classic Thai combination. I have to say that walking to the football ground, if I don't stop somewhere like this on the way, it's half an hour. Okay for me, maybe not for some. Not sure why they build these out of town stadia without any thoughts for the transport links. For example, Brighton, there's a very convenient railway station nearby. At City itself, buses, trams. Anyway, we'll see what happens afterwards, but I suspect I'll be taking a half hour walk to the station. And as for the footy, well, I think City will do something like they did against Chelsea, have mostly reserves and fringe players with the odd regular starter. And Southampton, I think they might do the same because the league, well, they're bottom. It's very precarious for them, but they're not far off safety. We'll see. Sometimes the manager, when it comes to playing big teams, they see it as a challenge and they put out their strongest team. But I am confident whoever City put out can beat their strongest team the way they're playing and I have noticed that the Southampton manager Nathan Jones who came in after they sacked Hasselhoodl has had a rather thin time of it of late I think one result in six games so my view was that sacking Hasselhoodl was a mistake if you're a Southampton fan watching that leave me a comment in this comment section below I'd love to hear your opinion anyway on to the food I've stuck with water tonight as promised might have a non-alcoholic lager in the pub later so a Thai classic tom yum soup with prawns, a hot and sour soup. I think it's a central Thai speciality, not quite sure about that, but I've seen it all over Thailand when I've been there in the past. Oh, it's very good actually, I'm very impressed with that. Properly spicy as well. And while Tom Yum soup should never be like a thick 
broth, it can often be served too watery, but this is just the right consistency. Got plenty of body, plenty of spiciness, sharp sourness, taste lemongrass and all the other essential ingredients in the soup. The prawns, yes, they're probably frozen, but in Britain it's always a bit of a catch-22. If you serve fresh, you end up losing some because people don't eat it. And then when the prawns are not fresh, people say, oh, well, I'm not going to have seafood, they'll stick to meat. You can't win, but I understand fully why they have to use frozen prawns. So that was fantastic, that was, and they were very generous with the prawns. I can't wait for the main. And whilst I'm waiting for my main, the team news has come out. I'm not too familiar with who normally plays for Southampton, except for we always see James Ward-Prowse in the news. Shay Adams, also their Scottish striker, is on the bench today. And an old favourite at City, Willie Caballero, he's still knocking around and is on the bench for Southampton. As for City, again, a mixture of experience and youth. Ortega, as always, starts to keep games. And in defence, Laporte stays in, as does Walker. Cancelo, who's been banging out of form, is played at left-back today but Sergio Gomez features, so this may well end up being a back three. Gundogan and Grealish have come in, and Julian Alvarez keeps his place up front. City, again, have a lot of firepower on the bench, including De Bruyne and Erling Haaland. Oh, and one thing I forgot to add is that Calvin Phillips gets a start ahead of Rodri tonight. OK, the mains are here. I won't try and pronounce the name of the dish because I can't pronounce time. It's a spicy noodle dish, although I have to say it looks a bit like a spiced up pad thai, the classic Thai noodle dish. As you can see, the noodles are the sort that you normally get with pad thai. But I will do some research on the name of this dish and leave a subtitle rather than butchering any pronunciation. It's a fairly simple preparation, rice noodles, pork, you could have got it with chicken or with vegetables or with prawns, peppers and some other green veggies. But given that I do like pad thai but usually don't order it because it's not spicy enough, this kind of hits the spot. Only 40 minutes till match time so I'd better put the camera down and get on with the eating. Well, that was a nice feed. It was slightly on the expensive side. These days, everywhere is, I suppose. Anyway, on to the stadium. Had to take a little Uber to get there because I was running a bit late, but we're just about on time to make kickoff. Southampton started pretty brightly and they've been by far the most energetic team. Looks as if we were about to counter and then Sergio Gomez, awful, awful ball to turn it over. We lost control of the situation, great cross in and they're 1-0 up, 1-0 Southampton. We have to do better than this, otherwise we're going to have to get the big boys off the bench. Well, Phillips 
Grealish especially, Sergio Gomez having absolute stinkers. This is not looking good at all. Pep needs to make changes and pretty soon because the people on the pitch we've got are not going to do the job. Well, absolutely woeful. The worst half of football I've seen City produce. Not sure what the formation was. Was Walker a centre-back? I think he was. And where was Cancelo playing? He was running around in central midfield and wings like a headless chicken. Sometimes moved into central defence. Really don't know what was going on there. Gomez had a shocker. Cole Palmer isolated. Grealish had a couple of chances but didn't get those first-time balls in. Come on, Pep, change something. I mean, this is the side that's bottom of the league. They beat Lincoln on penalties, was it? And they beat Palace away in the cup. And they've lost every other game of late. They've made five changes themselves. Time for you to make some. Second half just started. De Bruyne, Akanjin, Ake have come on. Let's hope that'll make the difference. The only positive I can think of is any goals scored if we come back will be at the end I'm sitting at, or standing at rather. Well, Erling Haaland and Rodri have come on now. All the meats on the grill, all five subs used. It's now or never. Easters, I'm at a wet and windy Basingstoke station on my way back after what was really a very disappointing game for City tonight. There was a little bit too much experimentation from Guardiola tonight, as I said at half time. Walker playing as a centre half and Cancelo supposedly playing at right back, but he seemed to be popping up all over the place in central midfield. Phillips didn't know what he was doing. Looks a little bit out of his depth in this team, to be honest. Cole Palmer had a bit of a poor game as well, although he wasn't given much to play with. Foden seems like he's not really recovered from the World Cup, but the worst of it all was saved us by Gomez and Grealish down the left, all over the place. And I thought it initially that it was Gomez who gave the ball away that allowed Southampton to break away and score their first, but reports suggest it was Grealish. I'll have to review the footage. They were both giving the ball away. Their first touch was awful, and when Grealish got forward again, too many touches, too many touches. What happened to what he was doing against Chelsea, laying off first-time low crosses? And I've said this before, I've seen it a lot, you just have to be a little bit off against fellow Premiership teams and some Championship teams, and find you get outplayed. And Southampton played really well today, and we were not at the races at all. Second half was better, particularly after Rodri came on for Phillips, but it was too late then. 
and it doesn't look to me as if Rodri gets a serious injury, we are in trouble. I don't think Phillips is good enough to cover, but we will see. He's had his fitness problems since the World Cup as well, and to judge him on one game might be a little unfair. De Bruyne, Akanji and Ake came on at half-time, and we looked a lot better. Haaland came on, and then eventually Rodri did as well. But we put all the meat on the grill, as I said, and it wasn't enough. Southampton defended really well. Of course, I forgot to mention the second Southampton goal. Another wonder goal. Could teams scoring wonder goals against us, please? And it's shown us that, A, we can't rely on all these really fringe players. I know what we played against Chelsea was a bit of a second team, but this was more like verging on a third team tonight. And I think the second half shows us that Alvarez and Haaland together isn't quite right. Alvarez is a forward, not a winger. I don't see how he can fit both players in the team, but Mr Guardiola, he knows more about football than I do. Well, you might have noticed I've changed stations. I'm at Reading. This is a tortuous journey back. Anyway, congratulations to Southampton. They get a two-legged semi-final against Newcastle. Good heavens, it's difficult enough to get just about back to London from Southampton. Not an easy journey for the supporters of Southampton and Newcastle on a midweek evening. Anyway, City next up have Manchester United in the derby at Old Trafford. And if we play like that, we are not going to get anything. However, I'm pretty sure we'll be playing our full strength team and we'll play better. It doesn't mean we're going to win or even draw, but it means that we're going to put in a much better performance. Unfortunately, I don't have a ticket for that game, so I won't be covering it for you. I am actually going to take a little break and go away somewhere. I might bring you a food video with a bit of footy chat, but I haven't decided yet. So my next football vlog will be at home to Tottenham on the 19th of January. I look forward to seeing you then, if not before, for my little getaway at the weekend. But until we do meet again, please remember, keep liking, keep sharing, Keep subscribing and most of all, don't forget, you can't beat a bit of mutton.